I photograph and film wildlife. Having a love for both is sometimes a little frustrating. I have to prioritise events when they happen in front of me. Film first, photograph second is my general rule I follow. That means I miss out on a lot of photographs every now and then. When it came to studying the agile antichinus females carrying their joeys, I found myself in that situation. There were four female agile antichinus that used this log as a highway to get around this area safely from predators. I thought if I stayed here long enough, I might be able to record the female agiles carrying their joeys. Females carry their joeys in their pouch for five weeks, then they leave them in the nest. But joeys are only visible from mum's pouch in the last four days, before mum leaves them in the nest. As each female reached that stage, they would give me a small glimpse of their joeys, then disappear, giving me no opportunity to take a photograph of them. One of the females I call Cat disappeared the week before the joeys would be visible from mum's pouch. She suddenly reappeared nine days later, carrying her quite visible joeys. It seems likely that she was taking the joeys to a new nesting site. I filmed the event first, then I waited for her to get into a nice pose so I could take a shot. But the birds kept scaring her and she would hide under the log. I was only able to take one shot of her before a bird flew by and frightened her off out of the area. That has been my only opportunity to take a photograph of an agile carrying her joeys for the past four years. And this year I'm hoping that it won't be five years without a sellable image. An agile female has taken up residence in a nesting box that I've made for the agile to nest in. I named her Sylvia. She's the biggest agile female I have ever seen. And she might be my last chance of photographing a female carrying her joeys for this season. I'm staying positive that she's going to come out tonight. Show me whether she has her babies or not. If she hasn't, I'll move on to the next one. If she has, spend as much, well, every second that I possibly can. There is no more time left. We don't want it to be five years that I haven't, since I last took my last photograph of a female showing her babies. I'd really prefer that it's Sylvia that shows me because there's a possibility that she might be that one out of a hundred that has eight babies. The average for a female antichinus, agile antichinus, is that they have six and that's all I see in here. But there has been recorded instances where they have had Eight. They have eight teats and it would be the best situation to take a photograph because the more there are, the more you'll see. So I'm hoping that that will be the case. She is at least 20% bigger than her peers. It's possible that she carries more, but we'll just have to see. Now I am practicing what I preach. And that is, if you don't do, you don't get. I'm putting in the hours, because if you don't, you don't get anything. <laughs> it's simple, simple logic. I'm putting the hours in. I have tonight, tomorrow, and then Sunday to get a shot. If things don't work out for me tonight, come back first thing in the morning which I will, even if it does work out for me tonight. Crack of dawn, just before the sun's coming up. Park myself here. As the last ray of light hit the nesting box, Sylvia came out and allowed me to take a few shots before she went off hunting. But unfortunately, there were no visible signs of joeys in her pouch. I returned at the crack of dawn the following morning.
and it didn't take long before Sylvia arrived back from a night of hunting. I managed to take a few shots before she went back up into the nesting box. While Sylvia's in the nest, I thought it was a great opportunity for me to throw together a bit of a lightweight framework for my tarp so I can sit here in comfort in all types of weather conditions for now and into the future. I'm very lucky, the sun is out, the sky is cleared. Any rainstorms that are coming are going well around me at the minute. So I'm doing all right for the morning. That'll be different later on. So how I've constructed this framework is I've just found branches on the ground and I'm looking for ones that have a V in it. So another branch coming out from the trunk. They help to lock everything together. So at each join, you have two of those Vs. They lock in together, make a very strong connection and you don't need much to tie them together. So I, had, I haven't brought any string out with me. I'm just using natural materials without destroying the environment as much, least as I can. I've used this cl climbing grass. It's native climbing grass. Just grabbed a few of it. There's tons of it around at the minute with all the growth from uh, spring. So I've just grabbed a few of them together, twisted them around a little bit, wrapped it around those joints, and it's solid won't be going anywhere. I have been getting entertained every now and then, last night and today, a male scrub wren, a white browed scrub wren, comes and says hello every now and then, has a little bit of honey and off it goes. It was the same last year, we've gotten to know each other well, uh, yeah, very comfortable around me, and it's very entertaining, been bringing in its chick, which came out the nest last week, I managed to uh, film the two chicks on the branch, but I didn't get to photograph them. It was yeah, another story, but I managed to get a little bit of foot, nice footage there. Two chicks out. So there's plenty going on around me. Uh, kept me entertained while I'm waiting for things to happen. All right, I'm going to sit down, wait, watch, and learn. I thought I'd fill you in with what's happening at my second location. My nesting box number two, nesting stump. It kept raining and raining and raining. So I thought, you know, I'm comfortable enough in my wet weather gear, but I'd be a hell of a lot more comfortable if I just put the tarp up. I had it with me anyway. Took me a minute or two to throw it up because of the shrubs that are here are just naturally placed in a great spot. Christmas bush here, silver wattle there, a sapling, and a couple more trees, shrubs behind me, so I just, I just chuck it up. I've got a stick here with a couple of uh, branches sticking out of it, so what I always say is a stick with a V in it is the most handiest tool you can get in the forest. And yeah, they just so handy. Little branch sticking out, break it off so it's just a nice size. Dry out some of my gear, sitting here in comfort. And now uh, that the mozzies love it too, it's nice for them to uh, come and suck my blood. And they're out of the rain as well. So we're, we're all happy here together. Right, so I arrived at 2.55. It's getting on the five o'clock now. She hasn't come out, this second female. I've only ever had a quick glimpse of her. While I was uh, setting this up uh, a couple of weeks ago, I rolled a stump here that I could uh, sit on and a few other things. I also put my trail camera up in the nesting box as well. But while I was doing this, she turned up. She got a little spooked of me. She shot around the back of the stump and went in the hole. So I haven't really seen her properly. I'm unsure of whether Sylvia is actually still carrying her babies. 
I've looked at the footage off my trail camera that also has audio so I'm listening as well she's bringing a lot of leaves into the nest during the night times which makes me think that maybe she's not uh, put her babies in the nest they generally completely finish doing that then they leave the babies in once the nest is completely constructed but might be wrong and why I'm saying this is I can't see any babies can't visually see any of them. I've taken photos of her when she's leaving so I can see her pouch as she disappears down the other side of the log. I'm not really seeing anything. I'll just uh, talk about writing a diary and the importance of it. When I first started studying the Agile, it never occurred to me to start writing a journal. I was capturing everything on film, that should have been enough information, and photographing. But years down the track, you realise that what you thought was right gets a little warped with your memory. Having a journal to back things up is essential. The rain continued through the afternoon, and the agile female stayed in her nesting box. I stayed until the light faded. I returned the following morning to nesting box number two and it's still raining. It finally stopped an hour later. The agile female came out to stretch her legs and headed down for some honey that I'd left out for her, allowing me to take a few shots. She had a bright patch of beige on her side, so I called her Sandy. And like Sylvia, I couldn't see any joeys visible in the pouch. After she finished the honey, she then disappeared into the undergrowth. Time for me to go home, but I'll be back later in the day. It is a beautiful night tonight. Plenty of birds singing around me. 20 degrees. Lots of mozzies sucking my blood. They're having a ball. There's not a cloud in the sky. So it's an awesome night. I thought I'd wrap up this video and quickly talk about the importance of writing a diary. And when I've uh, come to look at trying to photograph mum carrying her joeys, I had in my head what I remember in times gone by is around, around the 17th to the 20th. It's just about the time that they start to leave the joeys in a nest. And going back and have a look at some footage that I needed for this to show you guys, um, mum carrying her babies, that backed up what I remembered around the 17th. Now I've been watching these two in my nesting boxes, Sandy, and I'm, I'm at nesting box number one at the minute, with Sylvia, I want a bit more footage and a few more photographs of her. They're showing me signs that they haven't even really, babies haven't really even started growing all that much in the pouch. The pouch is held tight. The skin around the sides of their body flaps down to hide the joeys to help protect them a bit more. Because the pouch, it's an open pouch and it starts to open right up when the baby's uh, getting really big. So they have that extra flap of skin and lots of thick hair on it to just sort of hide them a bit. That's what I'm seeing here. Their pouch is tight. Skin's right down low. Their nest building. Still chucking heaps and heaps more leaves in. Which makes me think that they haven't put joeys in the nest yet. So it was a little confusing at first. But I've gone back and had a proper look at my diary. This has explained a hell of a lot to me. And this is why you need to write one. Keep it basic. Don't have to go in in depth. And this has helped me out a lot to understand what's happening. All right, so on the 8th of October, I've written here that Possum, the original owner of this nesting box, and it's I built the nesting box for her, so I could study her bringing up her young. The joeys were showing around the 8th 
they were about five centimetres long. Now, watch out for Sylvia coming. Could come out at any minute, surprise me. Now, we skip forward to the end of October. Possum leaves the joeys in the nest. So what I'm reading from this is marsupials, especially kangaroos, if the season isn't right, their food source is going to be a little later in the season. They will delay the development, development of the babies, joeys. And that's what I think I've seen here because they were all finished, the original, the original females that I filmed, photographed, having their babies and then leaving them in the nest. It was early. The possum was late. So I'm thinking that this is what's happened. The, the food source isn't going to be timed properly. So they've held back. So I think, I think I've worked it out. So what I'm going to do is keep monitoring them Watch what's happening probably next week. I might be able to start seeing babies. Well, we'll work it out anyway. So I just thought, talk about that, the importance of writing a diary. It's huge. It just makes life so much easier, like now, back up, work things out. And also, they're facts. If someone wants to uh, say that, hey, I don't think your facts are right. I don't think you've studied and done the right thing. I've got it here. I've got it on film. I've got all my evidence to back up what I've seen and studied. And by the way, Sylvia has helped me understand the dynamics between when, when females leave the communal nest and take up their own nest to bring up their young. Sometimes they bring another female will come and share the nest. I wanted to know how that works. When does the other female go? Is it you know, right near the end before the baby's um, about to be left in the nest? All those sort of questions where I was asking myself, you know, what actually happens? Well, Sylvia helped me solve that particular question. Trial camp, in the nest. Had it in there for quite some time. Sylvia decided it was time for the other female to vacate her residence. So it's amazing, isn't it? How much you can learn, you put the effort in. Oh, I've got a scrubber in here. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> Bringing a chick in to show that who I am, I think, and that I'm not a threat. Thank you. Awesome. If you'd like to subscribe and get more of this amazing stuff, click on the subscription button down below and hit the little bell. You'll get notification whenever I do anything else amazing like this. And if you want to go and have a look at my channel, there's tons of stuff there from me doing uh, camera accessory reviews. Anything I'll buy, I'll review it if I think it's worthwhile. Same with cameras as well. And um, I go on holidays, make little documentaries while I'm on holidays. I also talk about flash photography in the forest environment and a whole host of things like that. So over a hundred videos to choose from, some of it crap from my early days, but you know, most of it's all right, I think. So go and have a browse. There'd be something here of interest here. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife, and I'll catch you on the next one. Put on a ton of this shit. God knows what it does to your skin.